So I just recently read a book um, entitled Lifespan, Why We Age and uh, Why We Don't Have To by uh, David uh, Sinclair. It's a very interesting book. I recommend it uh, for anybody that's interested in really understanding sort of the biology of aging. Um, and Sin uh, David Sinclair is uh, an expert in this. He's done quite a bit of groundbreaking research um, over the last few decades on understanding biologically what's going on inside of cells and organisms as we age. Um, and there's two key things that, that uh, he points out here uh, in this book. The first is that there's this uh, survival circuit where organisms uh, sort of switch back and forth between either, hey, when there's plenty of nutrients and it's good, they grow as fast as they can. And when there aren't as much uh, nutrients or there's uh, damage uh, to their DNA, they, they stop they slow down their growth and they repair and they, they go into this maintenance stage. And it's this maintenance stage which leads them to live longer. They can survive longer and wait for you know those times of plenty later. When there's times of plenty, they grow and try to reproduce. Um, and uh, you know he argues that if we could uh, switch uh, you know our body to get to this sort of uh, more in line with this repair and weight mode, um, then that could increase longevity. Instead of weight, um, using all the resources to grow, we'd be using our resources to repair and remain um, healthy and stable um, the, in the body or the cell. The other concept he talks about is this idea of uh, epigenetics and uh, the epigenetic order in the cell. There's this uh, notion that aging is just damage to the DNA, and there's a lot of uh, truth to that. So as, as you age, there's mutations in the DNA, the DNA gets damaged. Um, but he talks about a group of uh, proteins in particular, the, the sirtuins, um, and what their job is, is to make sure um, the DNA is being used properly. Um, so the, it makes epigenetic modifications through the DNA. So certain genes get turned on when they need to be and shut off when they um, don't need to be used. For example, a skin cell is going to turn on a different set of genes than a liver cell. The two ends play a role in making sure in the liver cell, right, the liver cell turns on just the genes needed for the liver cell, not other genes that are needed for neurons in the brain or skin cell and so forth. Um, and these sirtuins, as uh, you know, the DNA gets damaged, they get recruited away from the genes they normally regulate to help fix the DNA. Right? Um, and then that leads to um, sort of epigenetic problems in the cell where genes start to um, get turned on when they shouldn't or get turned off when, when they shouldn't, these epigenetic uh, differences. And he says that's what you know, aging is when you get too many of these epigenetic differences. Um, the cells are no longer functioning the, the, the way they, they can. And so here's any, he argues that, you know, um, we can prevent aging um, or, or reduce aging um, by helping keep the sirtuins um, and operating the sirtuins so that they are there to help maintain the epigenetic order in the cell, right? So they don't have to get pulled away um, uh, for um, repairing DNA. So they don't have, if you have enough sirtuins, they can repair the DNA and maintain the epigenetic order in the cell. And this is very fascinating research uh, with this, where you can see that if you upregulate some of these genes, you can get organisms, you know, uh, model organisms, flies, uh, yeast, and worms to live 30% longer so they can increase their lifespan. Mm -hmm.